Hi and welcome to another exciting instalment of Bob, the Bucket of Bolts. In the last video we put together the cylinder and piston and popped it onto the engine. Now we need to top it off with something. So this is the cylinder head I've selected for Bob. Probably look just like your cylinder head. I hope it does anyway. Uh, unless you've got one of our more custom cylinder heads on there. It hasn't been selected for any particular reason. I, I do have a pile of these and this one is complete and it appears to be semi-serviceable. So we're just going to check it out and we're going to make it happen. So what we're going to do is just take the valves out of this head, uh, clean it up a little bit and uh, check to make sure that the valves are seating reasonably well and then put it all back together to put on the bike. Now I guess it depends on why you pulled your engine apart in the first place uh, as to whether you need to do this. Uh, Bob is, is really a, a more of a, a low-end sort of a, a rebuild I guess. Um, we've really re-ringed and re-pistoned an existing bore, uh, cleaned out a bottom end, replaced a few bearings. This, this is not what you'd consider to be reconditioning I guess. If you've had a specific reason to remove your cylinder head or strip your engine down and that these reasons were not related to your cylinder head in any way, you might just prefer to put your cylinder head straight back on. Uh, you can just clean it up, uh, make sure there's no foreign particles, all the gasket faces are clean, and then just put it on and use it. Um, we could probably do that with this head. Um, if something's defective, I tend to put it to one side. There's the good pile and then there's the not so good pile. This came from the good pile. But what I'd like to do with it today is just, um, I'm actually going to put new valves in it and um, just check to make sure that the seats are correct. Now by correct I mean that they, they're um, not pitted, damaged or anything like that and that they're serviceable and they will provide a good seal for the valves. So we'll start by cleaning the cylinder head up. Now the best time to clean the carbon out of the cylinder I've already started on this one at some point, is, is the best time to to clean that is while the valves are still in there and this just protects the valve seats and the valves at, on the ceiling faces from you damaging it with a screwdriver or a sharp object or something like that. There's a few different things that you can use. I've found that this works really well once I get it in the field of view. Is, is throttle body cleaner. If you can get it to stay in there. And this stuff is designed to strip carbon. Um, you can just scratch away at it if you like. Uh, make sure that your spark plug's still in there, that protects the thread. Um, don't scratch any of the gasket surfaces. The rest of it's fairly durable. Um, I'm not saying go nuts with the steel wire brush, um, but you can, you don't need to be incredibly gentle with them. Um, on the same token, you don't really want to start ripping in there and creating great big channels in there either. So we'll let that soak in. Once it's had a few moments, you can just gently start scrubbing away at it. And that will clean up fairly quickly. And I won't bore you with that. We'll press the pause on the record button and we'll come back when it's clean. Okay, so about five minutes later, and that's what we've got. So it's not immaculate, and it shouldn't be either. The moment you start that motor, this is just going to foul up again anyway. That's what it does. But too much of a carbon build-up is, uh, is not too good either, uh, for various reasons. The, the 
if your carbon is thick enough, uh, you run your motor hard for a long time, it'll actually glow plug, it will glow hot enough to ignite the fuel air mixture. Um, and it also makes your motor more prone to detonation and stuff like that. Um, so cleaning it up is a good, good idea if your motor is very high mileage or if you're like me and you just like cleaning stuff. So the next step is to pull those valves out. Now to remove valves, you need a valve spring compressor. And this thing doesn't even fit in the field of view all that well, does it? Uh, this little device is all about removing the valves by pushing the spring in. in fact, rather than describing, I might just show you. So that will go behind the valve in the centre of the valve. And this guy will go here onto the collet, onto the valve retainer, collars. So let's just have a look at how that's sitting right now. Tighten up a little bit more. So you can see that's pushing firmly on the on the valve right in the middle. And I've selected uh, one of these little devices. They, the valve spring compressor actually comes with a number of different size ones. Uh, the idea is to be able to compress that spring and in the middle of it you can just see, if I get this right, you can just see the collets. Let's have a closer look at those collets. And this takes the pain out of removing valve springs, by the way, one of these devices. You can get them from a, a car parts store or off eBay if you must. Alright, so you can see as we wind that in, what do we see? One, and if we push that over, there's the other. Well, let's just have a closer look at those guys. Now, these are high pressure springs, they have to be. So, just be aware that. If you don't exercise a bit of care and take your time, you'll end up with collets flying everywhere. And as you can see with that sitting in my hand there, they aren't particularly big. So, those collets, the outside of those, actually sit the gloves. Yep, so you can see that they sit in there. They're tapered on the outside and there's a recess. So there's your springs. There's a recess in the valve. Let's get that right up so you guys can see that. So, they do fit in there well. Yeah, let's ditch the gloves. Gloves, by the way, apart from protecting you from getting unnecessarily filthy, um, used oil in particular, especially from diesel engines, is actually carcinogenic. And if you spend a lifetime playing with these things, you um, certainly won't regret not getting cancer. So, 
when we look at the valve you can see those collets are sitting there and the spring pushes this collar up like that so when we compress the valve when, when we use the valve spring compressor and compress that collar what we're actually doing is pushing that down so that we can then separate the collets it's as easy as that now underneath all of this I'm going to throw these away these are just the valve stem seals now I like to point this out at every opportunity because with some of our big bore kits um, you actually take the valve gear from your original head and put it into the big bore kit head and um, the reason for that is that it just reduces the cost it makes it cheaper for you to buy the kit now if the spring just sat straight onto the alloy aluminium alloy head it would cut that up pretty quick so there's actually a hardened washer underneath the spring that sits there now some of them some of them really look like part of the head so you just need to be aware of it this one's come off pretty easy I'm beginning to sus suspect that this is a very low mileage head um, some of them you need to persuade them a little bit gently and they look like they belong there. So. Let's just do an exploded view. hardened valve seat washer, uh, the valve stem seal, the springs, now there are actually two of them, and then the collar on top, and then to hold it all together, your two collets. Clear as mud? I hope so. So we'll move all of these goodies to one side. Now, you guys would have probably noticed as well is that the inlet valve is actually bigger than the exhaust valve and the reason for that is that this, the exhaust gases they pretty much force themselves out um, the piston is actually rising when the exhaust valve opens uh, and that certainly helps expel the gases but you can imagine that the exhaust gases are actually the um, you know the, the the burnt fuel air mixture and, and the way the engine works of course is that uh, that fuel air mixture is burnt rapidly it doesn't explode that's the thing it is rapidly burnt and as it expands it forces your piston down and that's actually how it works so that stuff is still expanding and it does tend to um, to make its own way out of the the cylinder so once again oops magnetic tip screwdrivers if you want to magnetize your screwdriver set by the way just go to your mate's car, rip out one of your 6x9s, it's got a handy magnet in the back and you can just rest your screwdriver on that and it will magnetise. You should do this quickly though because your mate won't be happy.
Ooh, things are flying everywhere today. I like to take stuff like this out by hand if I can. Now let's push our camera right to its limits. So you can see, I better get a pointer. You can see that shiny surface there on the inlet. And going to the exhaust, that shiny, not so shiny surface there. Uh, it's better to see it on the inlet. That's actually where the valve closes. If we have a look at our valve, we've got a shiny face there as well, around the outside, and that's actually the point where they seal. So you can imagine your uh, inlet valve opens, piston is going down at the time, away from the head, drawing in your fuel-air mixture, and it closes, the piston comes up, compresses the mixture, and your spark plug fires it off. So at that point of course both valves are closed. So the sealing on that is quite important. If your valve uh, valves don't seal particularly well when you when your when your engine comes up to top dead center on the compression stroke it's squeezing that fuel-air mixture in preparation for igniting it with the spark from the spark plug. However, that fuel-air mixture is leaking out whatever valve or both valves. If you both valves are leaking slightly, then that fuel-air mixture is escaping. This reduces your compression ratio, uh, makes your motor burn more fuel, and... Um, it also reduces the amount of power you make and of course it's a CB125E, it's not like it has a bucket load of power to spare, let's be honest. Um, so having these sealed correctly means that your motor will at least be as efficient as it possibly can. So here's our new set of valves, nice and pretty. They've already been faced, so that that shiny part that you can see there, that's already correct. It's the right size and width and everything that we want. So what we need to do first of all is check both valves to make sure that um, the seats that they're going into on the cylinder head, because that's the valve, that's the valve seat, that's where it sits. Uh, the seats need to be roughly the same as that. And these ones, I mean visually, it's hard to tell of course, these ones look pretty close to that. But I'll show you how we can check it. So we'll put those over there. Now what we need to do first of all is actually elevate the head. And the reason for that is that upside down and on the bench, that valve doesn't close. And what we're going to do to it next needs for it to close. So, I'm using another cylinder head, just because I happen to have one handy. You can put uh, two pieces of equal size wood on either side, so one there and one there, so that the top of the valve pokes through like that. Um, you know what I mean? One there, one there, and that will just lift her off the bench. Actually, be a bit slippery from what we're doing, we'll find out. Now, the next thing we need 
is a dolly and valve grinding paste. Now be careful with this stuff, don't get it everywhere because this is a, it's basically an abrasive. Um, now the last thing you want is this stuff all over the cylinder head. Particularly you want to make sure that you don't get it between the valve and the valve guide. Now, in amongst the garbage on the, on the bench, that's your valve guide. So that is actually one of those, they're inserts. So these are pressed in and pressed out. That's a nice set of valve guides in this head. Um, if you get the valve grinding paste between the valve and the valve guide, that's the way she goes on. You can imagine, and we start doing uh, what we call lapping. This will mean that you're actually using that, that abrasive powder will start grinding away at the inside of the valve guide. And we certainly don't want that. So, excellent. Now, the dolly is just a suction cup. It's not a very good one, too, either, by the looks of that one. Um, and we're going to use it to actually rotate the valve. So what we're doing is we're getting our valve grinding paste and we're just gently... This is the fine. Now something I should point out is that when you get a tube of valve grinding paste if you open it at one end it's fine if you open it at the other end, it's what they call coarse. So one has big, big chunks of grit, and others, the other side has little chunks of grit. What we're going to do? Put a bit of spit on that. Squish him down. You can actually hear that cutting. Now we're going to the fine because we're going to use the fine to actually check what the seats are like. Also, the valve grinding paste doesn't help your dolly seal too good either. Like starting a fire the old fashioned way. And then pick it up, rotate it a bit. Pick it up, rotate it. And you can actually hear that and how that the sound of that changed. That's actually starting to cut. be able to see that very well. We'll try and get that right up there at a good angle. But what we have there is a very even grey line where the valve contacts its seat. And that's beautiful. That basically will seal very well. There's no marks or anything like that. It is just even all the way around. So that's nice. So we don't want to do anything with that. The exhaust on the other hand, it might be a bit different. Because the inlet 
uh, is simply passing um, you know, a, a wet inlet charge. Um, the exhaust is passing hot gases. And if you take your exhaust off at night at the cylinder head and go for a ride, uh, one thing you'll notice is you actually get a beautiful blue flame out to about here from one of these bikes. Um, and that's all going past the valve. So that's what your exhaust system, uh, your exhaust valve has to put up with. So we've got a, a matching seat there on this. So in actual fact that inlet side, that's good to go. That'll be just fine. So we'll do the same at the exhaust side. The beauty of using new valves as well is that you're using the face of a new valve. I'm just putting the paste on there real carefully. You're, um, using the face of a new valve to shape an old seat. Uh, you can use your old, you can do this with your old valves by the way, um, but this is a game of, of being cautious. Uh, we jump straight in, we're using the fine paste rather than the, the coarse paste and that's the best attitude to have. It's easy to take material away, it's not so easy to put it back. I'm always pulling it out by the way and rotating it about 60 to 90 degrees. As your engine runs, the valves do rotate. In fact, if they didn't do that, they'd probably burn out quite quick. Some engines, uh, the six-cylinder and a Toyota Land Cruiser is a prime example, they actually have built-in valve rotators. It's part of the valve train to force the valves to rotate. Now, hopefully we have a good valve seat here. If you find that you don't, if you have a look and there's marks on it, you don't have that even grey line, you have black spots or you can see something that's bad. You've got two choices in front of you. You can use the coarse uh, grind, valve grinding paste. See how it says grade 2 coarse on the back there. And of course you've got grade 1 fine there. You can actually use the coarse valve grinding paste to cut out minor blemishes. After you've used the coarse, pa coarse paste very carefully, come back and use the fine paste to smooth it out because the smoother it is, the better it will seal. If they're really bad, your best course of action is to take it to a reconditioner and um, have them uh, take a look at it for you and they can advise you as which way is the best way to go. Um, in the example of Bob where it's piston disintegrated, uh, the part of the piston could actually have been flung out through the valves. It wasn't because the top of the piston was still intact. Uh, but um, if the valve closes on a foreign object, uh, it will damage the seat and the valve. See, that's a little bit more travel weary. But 
but it's essentially still good. What I can see there, and, and hopefully you can too, is that there's just a little bit of spotting on there, little, little black spots. But even as they are, this valve would seal. Do go to a reconditioner, by the way, uh, and he cuts your valves for you. Ask him for a three-angle valve job, which is a performance option. Uh, once he stopped laughing, he'll probably do it for you, but it will cost a little bit extra. When you're doing this, by the way, you don't press down, you let gravity do the work. If you press down, the excessive pressure will probably mean that you're doing more harm than good. again. That's beautiful. Now, that's the valves done. And it wasn't particularly time consuming either, have you noticed? The other aspect of the head that is inclined to wear um, is actually the valve guide, which I showed you there. Um, it's actually that thing there, this is actually the top of it, that's where your valve stem seal goes and it's pressed into the head like that. You can drive them out sometimes with a, a pin punch set. I guarantee you that once you've driven them out, uh, the valve guides that you've driven out will not be reusable. Um, depending on how tight they are in the head, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a, a dodgy proposition. So I actually suggest that you check them, and that's easy to do. You just pop your valve back in the guide, and you should feel a little bit of movement there, but not a massive amount. The valve probably, as that one did, It's just tight enough in there for that to not come out. And that's probably the best way to check your valve guides. You can measure them. Um, using new valves is a bit of a cheat because you can imagine that the valve does wear along there. And um, I mean you can actually see that when we compare. That's our used valve. You can see that shininess there. That's our new one. If we measured those, this one would be thicker. And that's taking up part of the slack. Uh, so replacing your valves, it does have, it's a bit of a cheat. Um, your valve guides, on the other hand, if you put those in there and it slops right out, and when you're rocking your valve like this, instead of it just gently moving, you probably can't even see that. Um, if it moves excessively, 
you've probably got a problem. Uh, the valve guides are quite cheap, but as I said, they're painful to install at home, um, and I don't recommend it unless you've got a press. Pressing them out is the best way. Uh, the best way to install them is to stick the head in the oven at about six, and set the oven at about 60 degrees and throw the guides into the freezer. Um, that will freeze the guides, it will make them contract and become smaller. Uh, the cylinder head on the other hand will expand because it's heated and they'll actually go in there quite easily. Um, but I don't recommend you guys do that at home. So now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is clean the head up for reinstallation. Put this one to one side. That's our new valve, that's our new valve. So having used valve grinding paste on it, we need to get rid of the paste. That, that um, will cause problems if it gets into the wrong place. Even if it drops into your cylinder, a bit of valve grinding paste between the, the piston and the cylinder wall and it will just wear your cylinder out in record time because that's what valve grinding paste does. So we'll clean her up. I won't bore you with watching me clean parts because I promised you guys that it wouldn't happen. Uh, back into the metho tub of course if you've got compressed air, blow it out with compressed air and um, then you're good to go. Good to assemble anyway. So our cylinder head's starting to look pretty good at this point. There's one last thing we should check. That face there where the cylinder head gasket goes, that has to be fairly flat. In fact, for the 125V, the maximum warpage is 0 0.05 of a millimetre. So that's about that thick. <laughs> Not much warpage uh, tolerance there. It's an air-cooled engine. Air-cooled engines generally are tolerant, but having a warped cylinder head will give you problems. Um, leaking head gasket straight off the top of my head is a prime example. So how do we know if this is warped? Easy. That's our warpage limit. 0 0.05. And this is a flat edge. Now all you need to do is move that flat edge around the cylinder head like that. Now if that feeler gauge can go in anywhere, you've got more than that in warpage. It's good to do this from several angles. I mean really, ooh. No, oh, no, that's interesting. There is slight warpage there, yeah. but within tolerance, so that's fine. So you can see how the, how on this angle the, the edge of the feeler gauge is sort of biting but it's not able to go through. When you can put that feeler gauge through, that's when you've got warpage, so like that. That's your problem. then you've got problems. But at least check it on that plane and that plane and diagonally as you go. Um, as you saw there, slight warpage. Don't be surprised if your cylinder head does have slight warpage. Uh, that's the nature of things. Um, but as long as it's within specification, you're good to go. So I reckon we should put this thing back together. Now, what we'll start off by doing, seeing as we've cleaned up these faces here, on the, um, on the valve seats, in beautiful condition, 
So we don't want them to rust or corrode or whatever. So just a little smear of oil. Now on startup, we also want our engine to be lubricated, particularly at this end of things, because it does take a while for oil to work its way into the valve guides. Okay, so we're starting with the big valve, the inlet valve. stem cell. Maybe two. Okay, so these guys just slip over that, that little knob on the end of the, of the valve guide. Just nice and gentle our valve through. Now what's missing? Uh, okay, so I've just made a common mistake. But I'll admit to it. That should go on first. Then the valve stem seal. There we go. So that of course, that thing that I forgot. I guess that would be the Alzheimer's or the dementia. Or I forget which one I've got. Um, that stops the spring from cutting up the, the cylinder head. So there's our springs. The middle one will go on that upper step there and the other one will go underneath. And this is pretty much the opposite of when we pulled it apart. So once again, in the middle, this time we're compressing the springs. to see the fun and games that is putting the collets in. Okay, so I've repositioned it to make it easier for you guys to see. What I've done there is I've partially compressed the springs and then I've put the collets, one on each side, right side up, next to the valve stem. Now they don't quite line up with the groove that they're supposed to go into, but let's see what happens. They don't line up because they're not quite low enough. All we're going to do is just gently compress the spring and fingers crossed, the collets will drop, the collets will drop. One dropped. One 
and strung out. It's now in a vice, by the way. So, once again, I'm just using my finger on them now to stop them from springing out because apparently they do that. Actually, that's a pretty damn good view, that. I'll let you guys just have a bit of a look. You can see that there. Swans fall in a place. the other one is. My critics benefit that was not a hard tap. Okay, so we're just about there. one.
Okay, so that got pretty challenging, didn't it? Let's do it again. Practice makes perfect. So we put our washer, our, our hardened washer on first this time, the way we should have last time. And another valve stem seal. So I've mounted the valve spring compressor in a vice because it seems to make my life a little easier doing this. mention that patience is a virtue. Probably by now. Okay. <coughs> Just make sure that's in the centre of the valve and it is. So I think it's a question of practice. It's not something you will actually do a lot of. I would hope for your sake you don't anyway. <laughs> Uh, this is an easier task with uh, a bigger engine. So I'm winding it out a bit because I'm not happy with the location of this collet that's already in there. So we've got that half in thing happening again. Oh, it. Best advice when you do this is not to work too close to the edge of the bench. Should be chasing colds. So. 
all over your floor. Sometimes just a subtle tap can make all the difference, but a tap is exactly what it is. Definitely nothing more. There we go. That's two. There we go. It's very hard working this close to the camera. There we go. So we'll get this out of the way. Whoa. All right. I can do that a lot better than that. But I'll mumble some excuse at some point. Like now. It is a tedious job though. Um, and you just need to be patient. And it will all happen better. You're not trying to work within millimetres of a camera. <laughs> there we go, that was my mumbled excuse. But, there's our cylinder head. 
So we'll cover that up for now. And come time for assembly, we'll give it another shot of compressed air to make sure it's clean. Just sticking the plug in there for now, because it's a good habit to get into. And we're done. Check your cylinder head. 